Okay, here's a tale of Christmas, or actually well before Christmas, that most of you have not ever heard of. It's just a little piece of folklore and, uh, in another story. And it's not one of the stories that have something real fantastical necessarily so much, but it has a couple of neat things that happen. And that's about it. And in fact, the only commentary you can find on it whenever you find this story is that they wonder why this was kept so long so much. There's got to be something in here that's got a meaning that goes beyond past. And uh, people have looked into a lot of these different ones and stuff, but this is one that's somewhat ignored. And it can go back quite a bit of time. Uh, it appears that it comes along with one of the earliest forms that people have of mythological stories and folklore that they keep through time. It's one of those things where you have to peer back through the looking glass, and like I've shown in some of my current videos, or recent videos, how long fables can go back, and a lot of times we lose them at about 10,000 years ago or at the end of the last ice age and really have no clue from before that. But there are even hints, even on cave wall paintings and so on, that they had ideas that were going on well before, like Orion we've shown with Taurus and things like that. Strangely, Catalhoyuk, people have probably seen something about this or whatever, but this is kind of in the Anatolian area, if you will, or Armenia of today. And it was found and excavated out, and whenever it did, it laid out to be a city in a grid like this. And the cities are somewhat, li or the houses are somewhat like New York, just shoved up on each other. There's no yard in between the houses or anything like that. In fact, this wall of your house ends up becoming the outer wall of my house and so on and so on and so on and quite often whenever they find these there's two stories and even three story buildings that they found and perhaps more but they didn't want to go on that but whenever they looked at this um, people were getting up on the roofs and all getting in from the top if you've studied or heard anything about Cattle Hoyuk, that's one of the things they didn't have just an open doorway like we have now right at ground level, but usually we went in at the second level, even if it was a three-story place. And a lot of the people during the summer and things apparently lived up on the upper roofs and would sleep up there as opposed to in the house and so on. They had stoves. They had stove pipe kind of things that let it out. They had an extreme worship for Taurus the Bull and so on. And that kind of makes sense looking at the time that they were coming into and so on. But also it shows you that they already had somewhat domesticated cattle. And people have done a little test on that and found that that is Botaurus or whatever. But in the same thing, this is they already had these things starting to be domesticated. And of course in a modern day with the way we just recently looked at things because of religion and so on, and then way we were being able to pick it apart and how things didn't just go poof like a popcorn, right? There's the Sumerians and near a date that we thought, but it goes back much earlier, and of course, before even this date here, there's Gobekli Tepe and its associated 11 sites that are around it that show all of these Stonehenge type of circles that are astro-theological hookups and people living there, and it's all built into their ideas, and a lot of people have made connection that there's a total connection to these people that are here, and in fact, the connection that runs through there and connects Gobekli Tepe looks like it was connected to the Natufians in some way, and comes on down into the Holy Lands, goes through Egypt, and even farther down, and even to the Sub-Saharan Cape, because they're connected to these rock circles, that are found all across what we call the Black Desert because it has a lot of black pebbling in it and so on that is out in the Middle East or in Levant pushing more westward. And there's a swath there from oh, what we call Syria today all the way into Yemen or that area there swerving across that. Thousands of these things and some are for catching cattle and things like that and all these circles. And people have made ideas that it's real recent to the point that it's here, it's there, it's real 
old and not a lot of investigation is done on them. I did a couple of videos about this, but the exact same things are found all the way down in the Sub-Saharan Cape. And I really think that's the reason that they don't want to look at that is the truth that that would end up showing to people. And, you know, it, 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 it hurts so bad for people that have this idea that 4000 BC is whenever the world got created, whenever somebody even finds a dinosaur bone or anything else, and they try to apologetic all about it. But it's not really for the scope of this, but religion is definitely kept in the idea of Christmas. In a modern day, we have this hookup with this um, idea that that's whenever Christ was born. And anybody that gets into that realizes that they... Um, took a pagan holiday and attached it on to it. And he was probably somewhere in, in uh, early September or whatever. And a lot of people said, you know, that has to do with September 11th. But it's not really the scope for this video here that we're talking about. For We're trying to have a connection to Christmas and something that may have connections of it. And I seem to every year pretty much try to put out some more and more and more information on ideas on what goes with Christmas. And it's kind of crazy, but you're able to actually go through and look at Christmas and pre-proto-Christmas, if you will, and rituals that were done before any of that, and it's all attached to the fact that the sun reaches its lowest point on December 23rd every year. And then it doesn't rise or go any lower for three days. And then, magically, it starts to rise again to save all of mankind. So the old story before we had everything on to it, apparently, was that the sun, that uh, people used to worship as a god, falls to its lowest point on December 23rd near a constellation that's uh, called the Southern Cross to this day. And then it dies, symbolically sits still, and then rises again three days later. And I guess that sounds familiar. Only it's been twisted into a different story now. Well, let me tell you some fragments here. And I'm doing this kind of raw. I'm not going to be able to read it off the thing or, even, you know, um, uh, things. I don't, I don't have that in front of me. And there's one thing that I really don't have in front of me that I'd love to show you. But I couldn't find the picture of it looking for it here and I tried two different days and I'm like man it's coming close to Christmas let's just go ahead and get this out there's a wall painting in Cattle Hoyuk someplace that I can't find the picture of it shows these people waving at a guy and he apparently has things that look like elk or deer or whatever a reindeer pulling this sled that uh, is really just, uh, it's, a, it's a sled. There's, this is way before the wheel. There's no wheel. And so it kind of looks like whenever they do the boats and stuff, and in ancient days where it's got that swoop at the front of it, like a ski or something like that, right? And that's the way they're built. And we think of that as being a winter thing, but that's the same way they were built in Egypt to pull across sand and things like that, too. A sled, and these sled people that knew about sleds, and it was the big thing, and that's what Egypt had. And that's why there's another connection to those ancient Natufians and Egyptians and so on, too, because they had that. But these people had sleds, and so these people look like they're just waving at this guy, and he's uh, on a sled, or a sleigh, if you will. And he's being pulled along by like five deer. Now, that looks kind of whatever. And whenever a lot of people hear about this, if it's not around Christmas time, you won't get much reaction out of them necessarily. But if you twist this concept around into it, that looks like they're waving at Santa Claus or something. And if we take the idea that when you look at it, it looks like you're just here and they're there on the wall you're here they're there but in reality yeah that's my cat he loves to get right in the way um one of the two cats that's Sheldor um instead of these people just being ones over here and ones over there in a perspective point of view if you want to dream about it and turn it into something in the modern day looks like he's flying 
And so here we have a guy with reindeer purling across the sky. And it's done in red ochre. So there's a connection with this red, with this idea, and this guy that's there. And he looks like he's wearing a cap, too. Even though there's not much detail to this picture I'm talking about, it looks like somebody finger-painted the thing. You know what I'm saying? But it basically has this idea. And you can see the swoop of the sled. He's on it or whatever. It must be bundled up or something out of it. But it looks like he has a pointy head with a little dent on it. It looks kind of like a Phrygian cap of later days, by the way. There's not much more about that. And over on the wall over here, there's cows and stuff like that. And da da da. And this is one of the houses that had a mantelpiece with a cow head thing or the horns on it and stuff. And they had another set near the beds or whatever. And it looked like maybe a well off to do. But basically, everybody living here is just one people. And it didn't appear that they had even decided to take and make an overchief or where he was in a bigger house and anybody or whatever everything's everything's here but the thought was if there was an overchief he eventually got like two houses put together or something along that line and they even think that maybe this one area was it or this one area was it because it looks like those houses could have gone that way or a little communal and other people said you know this could just be a family and they just decided to bust the door between them because it's family so it it could go a bunch of different ways. This is far back enough to where we can't really, you know, it's one of those things that gets to be fogged thicker and thicker and thicker as you go through time. If you look at Alcoyuk, we're talking about 8,000 years ago and so on off of it. This is so, this is a, a come down or a few thousand years after that. Well, this idea, this extra Christmassy thing that goes along with this is these people apparently are attached to this mythology it's one of those things where this there's a mythological story and they all feed back to so and so and so and so because certain ones and it uh, just to be kind of bland but explain it they go it, it apparently followed the bell beaker culture and so on and then comes out of that and the corded wear culture too and so it's something that goes back before that and wherever they come and you know go to and so on and then it feeds back and here we are now around Caucasus Mountain area, Black Sea Range, da da da, and here, 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 and this is one of those years. And this tale that went along with it that I'm going to attach to Cattle Hoya because of a reason that's something that's stated here, and we'll get to that in a minute, but let's go with this story now that may or may not be exactly connected to Cattle Hoya, actually, but when we have this little reindeer thing on the wall that seems like it's inconspicuous and just blah and you add a few things together hey maybe that well if that culture was supposed to have already had this maybe this is that it's just a little conjecture if you will or something if you along that line but so this weird story here is this guy is ended up in the story going out to a sacred grove to get something that he's already prepared now, when he goes out to the sacred grove, they have a special tree in this grove that's separated in a huge open area that they have created and maintained, basically, is what it comes across. And in doing so, he goes out to that area and he brings back this thing. Now, they didn't know what this thing was in the first of the stories but as you get it from a lot of the other people you come to find out that these are mushrooms okay and people have made the conjecture that this is one of those magic mushroom situations and that's kind of odd because in the story the man has taken that sacred tree and put these things decorated upon it where it's like the decorations on a tree, but to keep them away from the other reindeer and things to be able to eat them because they get high and they can fly. Does that sound familiar? And whenever they talk about that, it's surely that they get all stoned and they're, you know, they act weird or so on, but they actually refer to something that comes across as flying. So just add that notched into there. Here's a piece. And then over and above that, when he goes and gets these off these trees and he comes back or whatever, 
it uh he apparently has reindeer pulling his sleigh now in a part of this story it's he has reindeer and they're all trained with him and he takes them out there does this gets the gifts for all the people and the families that have done good this year well that's starting to sound familiar kinda but it looks like an adult thing and it's not for kids and he has this sleigh and he goes out there and then back but in one version of the story part of it the people of God which is extremely similar except this was this one thing that's different that the reindeer fly home uh, I think this is fast what they're trying to get across is that idea but it doesn't say that it says that the reindeer fly home and the reindeer are attached to this guy's sleigh so does the sleigh fly too and why is this guy all in red and got a reindeer cap on well that sounds weird okay I'll tell you another one whenever they show up to the place that's in this and this is why they'd be able to try to attach it to Catalahoyuk is it in the idea when the guy comes down into the house which makes no sense to anybody how you would come down into a house trying to figure that one out except for these people and the way they were you come down into the house and this guy comes down into the house and apparently this is the idea that he goes around to each house giving some of these gifts and apparently these gifts are these mushrooms that make these reindeer fly are you following me Okay, and, uh, oh, by the way, this happens in winter, because in at least two forms of the version of it, it explicitly says uh, snow, like, uh, over uh, a few times. So these are people that are not anywhere in the tropics, and they have this idea of, of uh, when the snow comes, you know, da-da-da, uh, da-da-da, and all this happens in certain things in a sacred grove, and this guy sets up for it and everything for a certain time. Now, is this keyed on December 23rd or anything no not necessarily but if we put two and two together it's probably around that winter solstice type thing there solstice means the sun stands still and it does for three days so there's a connection to this uh, pagan myth that led to a whole bunch of other things but uh, this housing here people go down and into it and you wonder why people had the idea of him coming down through a chimney and things in the first place. And some of these guys that are way into this mythology, like Craig and Ford and other people, have taken ideas like this and said, well, you know, uh, that's probably where that came from. And that it symbolically utilized the hearth before, because that's the thing that's sustaining everybody. That's the cooking thing and the heat of the house for the whole year and everything well you know how, how how would he come make it down through there well still to this day your kids even whenever they're real young have the idea that how the hell does he do that you know he magically is able to do some elfin magic and poof off into your house and just show up or things and we've twisted it all into that but in the original story he went down into the house so i don't know well here's down into the house and they say this dates way back machine probably at or before this dating year i.e. it could have been somewhere around 10,000 BC and peter out it's of a group of myths that fall along that and they've got three or four that have some odd meanings into them that people don't really go off of or talk about all the time but in that fact too we have some of them and this one apparently is one of these elder ones but people don't even understand supposedly what the myth is about anymore and what it was about around about in the 60s somebody came up with the idea that this is it and it has to do with the mushrooms thing and I think people tried to write that guy off but now that these myth people have gotten onto it and figured out how far it goes back and linguistics and connections and who the, and where it goes to and triangulate it kind of pinpoints an idea on that and it might have a little more truth in the idea 
and that actually is something in a portion of the story that we still to this day keep. And if you remember, whenever we talked about elves, who Santa is supposed to be connected with, and if we take the people that got turned into the elves that we talked about, you know, of course, the Bell Beaker and Corded Ware, we take that and wrap that back about two series of people, we end up here at the same people, too, in the same place where this similar story was told. They got kept all through time, which really doesn't seem like it's got that super bang thing that all the stories have or something neat that sparks out or a firework going off. But then again, I, I, I see three or four fireworks in the same story that they've got in the pieces. And that's one of those things where you don't really have the Bible idea of Jesus being born unless you add Luke and Matthew together, right? And this takes the idea of, well, this comes from a common story, and you take these people and those people's version, and you get all the little BS that's in it. And now we have flying reindeer in a sacred grove where trees are. Oh, I left it out. And in a, in a couple of these, so it, apparently it's common, that he brings a tree back. Now, it's kind of lost through time on whether or not that tree that we're talking about with the mushrooms on it gets taken, or if it gets left for years after years as being sacred, and he just brings back a Christmas tree for some reason. You can also find portions of this left with this ancient Sumerians, where even the Bible will tell you that these people during this time of year would take a sacred tree, and they would chop it down and bring it into the house, and it's an evergreen tree, and they would decorate it, sometimes with stars. Some people have made the connection they would put the stars on the tree where it basically looked like a uh, constellation, and they would flicker in the firelight. So there's another connection there, and I have about 10 videos or more on Christmas. In fact, one year I did the 12 years of Christmas, and I was like the 12 bullshit things that are attached to Christmas that we have nowadays, and da da da. But I did it in a five series. So actually, I have over 20 videos on Christmas alone. I mean, holidays is holy days in some way, and we can actually look at those and then the Wayback Machine, and it's quite telling. It's also my favorite time of the year, and so on. I really get into Halloween and all those different ones, and then the mythologies that are attached to that, and where we get all that crap from. So it's pretty neat, you know, and uh, in this story, we don't have any vampires or things like that, but we have these strange reindeer that are getting high, and then they fly home, uh, which is kind of odd, but what makes them fly? Well, the, the guy gives them some of the mushrooms. I mean, there, there we go. Well, in the story we have now, they take some magic grain and do it somehow. Yeah, later... It's actually said that these people would ferment this grain and do these things, and they go like, oh, so they're making alcohol and stuff. No, in the story, apparently, it's not wet or doing it liquid brewing type of thing. They're letting it ferment. That makes ergot. That makes something that's like LSD. So does that fit the idea, too, with these flying? Reindeer? kind of neat i just thought i'd share that with you it's uh you know something for the holidays i guess and here we are at it so it fits well i hope y'all all do good through the holidays here and y'all bundle up nice and if y'all go skiing or do any fun things or whatever i hope y'all uh have fun with that and everything's all safe with it and uh you have a beautiful holidays there will be a couple other videos about the holidays that are coming in, but I thought I would put a couple in here coming into the holidays and seasonal things like I do around Thanksgiving and Halloween leading in. Here's another one. Enjoy. Let me know what you think down below. Peace.